Hello and welcome to another episode of Footlock. My name is Drew Stone and I'm joined, as always, by my Footlock friend, Mr. Henry Catchpole. Hello, Drew Stone. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah, this is a bit last minute, wasn't it? A <laughs> little bit. We just arranged it this morning. But uh, you Jumped guys... Luckily, yeah. I'm wearing a t-shirt that's actually sort of kind of, you know, I might have chosen to wear anyway. So. I, and I didn't wash my hair this morning, so I'm wearing a hat. Um, <laughs> which, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can obviously see. But you might not be watching this on YouTube. You might be listening to it on a podcast. On a podcast, because big news, everyone, the podcast is back. Um due to really high demand and a lot of you have been asking this question for months and months and months when is the podcast coming back it's now back um the way it used to work was we would run quite long in the youtube um in the in the recording and we'd make the full length version available as a podcast and a cut down version was the version you saw on youtube um but people just wanted the episodes to get longer and longer uh, so the podcast felt a bit redundant but you guys felt it wasn't redundant and that you want to be able to listen to us well, I don't know, running, walking, driving, whatever you'd like to do. Um, so it is now available. It took us a while to get it working again on iTunes. It is. You can find it on iTunes. You can find it on Stitcher. And the team is working on making it available on Spotify. Uh, we've never been on Spotify, so that's taking us a little bit longer to arrange. But hopefully by the next, by the time we've got the next episode of Footlock... Um, we will be able to have that for you. But that exciting news, if you do find it and you do enjoy it, uh, please leave us a positive review on uh, iTunes. That always helps other people find it. Um, just do a search for Carfection for the love of cars, and it's the big orange square logo. Hopefully you can't miss it. <laughs> exciting stuff. Um, we have another packed show for you. We're going to rattle through a lot of stuff. We have a very SUV-heavy episode. Oh, yes. Um, just the way of the world. Um, <laughs> they are interesting SUVs, I do promise. But just to spice things up at the beginning, we have two very exceptional and very interesting cars to talk about. Very we're, much not SUVs. In very style, much not SUVs. Now let's talk. Uh, start with the more familiar of the two names, McLaren. They have unveiled something tasty. They have, yes. It's, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's another one of these sort of limited run. It's in their Ultimate series, which is where the, the Senna and the P1 uh, live. And it's called the McLaren Elva. So it, um, Elva was a sports car manufacturer back in the late 50s, 60s. Um, and uh, there was when McLaren, Bruce McLaren was producing um, cars, he, there was a McLaren Elva back then, which is why this takes various mm. inspiration from that. And yes, it's got the same engine, obviously, that McLaren uses for everything. So it's not got any hybrid in it uh, or anything like that, uh, but no windscreen. So that's yeah, very that's much a roadster kind of feel. Yes, yeah, it has something on it called um, Active Air Management System, um, ARMS. Um, it's what they look. They they put. I'm going to make an if, acronym out of it. It feels um, like one of those acronyms where they've written it first and then decided afterwards what it actually stands for. Yeah. This car has arms. arms yeah. Which yeah. Stand for. And somebody's clearly going to make some sort of gif of the car with with that. Yeah, exactly. On. If you would like to do that, please send it into us on Twitter <laughs> at Carfection. But it's it's basically the McLaren version of Ferrari's Monza SP. Well, SP2, I suppose, because yes. this has two seats. Yeah, we saw them at Frankfurt, I believe, two years ago. Mm. Yeah. Um, and yes, when you say that, that does make a lot of sense. Highly impractical to the nth degree. Absolutely. Um, and have they said how many they're making? 399. That's quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, more yeah, than I would have expected. Well, I think Ferrari is producing 500 of the Monza, mm. so... Um, yes. Clearly there's a market for it. Apparently so. Um, some of the facts and figures, uh, 815 mm. PS, that's saying 804 brake horsepower, uh, 800 newton meters, 6.7 seconds to 124 miles an hour, or 200 With clicks. no windscreen. Yeah, yeah. And sub sub three seconds to 60. So, um, yeah, and they're saying it's all about the feeling and the feedback. It's not purely a sort of, you know, a race car, despite being linked to a, race car originally yes. sort of it's not this is this is meant to be all about the all give you the feels basically so mm. uh, yeah I'm I, I I like the idea of not having a windscreen but it does look like it's missing something the design yeah. it, it, it don't think it's benefiting it um, it's, especially if like a race car race car without a windscreen is not as aerodynamic as one with <laughs> one right even a convertible um, I mean, in my rudimentary understanding of how aerodynamics works, I mean, that's a nice smooth surface for the air to go over, yeah. as opposed to my face, which is not smooth anything. Yeah, it, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to go <laughs> and sort of... <laughs> I'm talking of um, aerodynamics, obviously, we should have said what ARMS actually is, which yes. is um, it's effectively meant to push the air up over the occupants. Right. So it creates a, a bubble 
to, mm. for them to sit in. Um, so it's like a, a sort of a virtual windscreen, I suppose, um, which th- there have been things in the past that obviously you get sort of little uh, flaps in front of a... In, on a Patreon or something like that that flick and they work to some extent um, Aston so Martin used a, a similar system to create a air spoiler at the back of something like exactly. the DB11 yes. channeling yeah. air to yeah, yeah, force yeah. air to do it um, I'm, I'm sure saying this is a true world first which I'm um, yeah car with arms definitely <laughs> is, is a first <laughs> so yes it's been also the majoring on the lightweight thing except they haven't actually said how lightweight it's going to be so mm. it, they've said it will be the lightest one of their ultimate series so I think the Senna at 1198 kilos is currently the lightest so somewhere around I don't know 1100 kilos yeah something like that well it's uh, maybe one day we'll get a chance to drive this thing at the moment we're just looking at renders don't you find the name Elva feels quite Lotus yes yeah Yeah. there is something um, quite lotus about it isn't it so, but fair enough there's um, there's precedent for the name um, well that's obviously a, a a fairly out there car that very few people will ever get to see but from a manuf- 1.4 million um, so, yeah. these days though that just feels par for the course in these kind of cars I kind of feels like I don't know there's I know I've said it before but um, Aerial Atom 4 if you want that sort of experience just I mean an Atom will do 0-60 I should think in under 3 seconds yep Quite a few like, sports yeah, cars can do that a, now. Just and feels bonkers fast. Yeah. It, it's just that's going to give you all the connection to the road you could possibly want and all that sort of thing. It seems slightly I don't know, but there we are. It's um, well from one manufacturer that we absolutely have heard of to one that um, until a couple of seconds ago <laughs> um, I had not. Um, <laughs> Tell me about Gianarelli. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. Uh, the, yeah, the, desi- the design one. Yeah. So they launched a car out in the um, UAE, uh, I think last year, but they've they've now launched it uh, in the UK, and it's called the Design One. Yeah. And hopefully you can see a picture of it on screen. Now, if, if you're listening to the podcast, it's, um, I suppose it evokes uh, things like uh, Cobra, the original Cobra, yep. and in fact the Daytona Cobra as well. There's a bit of yep. that in there. It's definitely '60s uh, sports car, sort of. Quite, um, yeah, quite inspired. American in its yeah, design. A, a really sort of, it's a good-looking thing, isn't it? I think. Yeah, I think I'm seeing some really Stingray nice. in there. Yeah, yeah. In, in the convertible version, it looks like it's been the photos I'm looking at here. They look like quite small wheels, which is quite. Okay, don't look back at that photo. Yeah. Tell me where the where the engine is. I was going to say. Well, my initial instinct was to say front end. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. So don't think about it. <laughs> exactly. It's not. It's Look not. again. Oh, it's, it's, mi- it's mid-engine. It's mid-engine, yeah. yeah. Exactly. But it looks front-end. For all the world, it looks like a front-engine car, yeah. doesn't it? No, because yeah, I, was, exactly. I was thinking like, C, like C3 <laughs> Corvette kind yeah, of shape. Yeah. So my, Absolutely. I, I, I did exactly the same when yeah. I kind of I looked at it. I was like, oh, hang on a minute. That's the or engine behind the, the, uh, yeah. the Shelby cars, the Daytona, the Cobra. The, so, yeah. yeah all, so there no, mid, you're right, mid-engine. Yeah. That which, engine is a uh, 3.5-litre naturally aspirated V6 uh, from Nissan. Uh, yeah. So presumably the 370Z mm-hmm. um, 350Z engine, uh, manual box in it, um, Very nice. and 325 horsepower, 810 kilos, top speed of 135 miles an hour, which I like. I like the fact it's not gone That's for a, a big quick. high no. speed, so presumably it's got quite short ratios in there, not 16 under four seconds. So yeah, I and in the UK, 86,000 pounds, which is wow, you know. I'm, that's a lot of money, more than I can afford, but equally, it's not. You're getting a very pretty car for that money. Exactly. You're getting something they're saying they're going to build or hope to build in the sort of in the low hundreds. Um, so, probably the same, you know, <laughs> so you're as likely to see one of those as a, as a McLaren Elva. So. Quite. Um, you mentioned it was unveiled in the UAE. Is it? Is it? A, is the company based out of yeah, the UAE? Yeah, I think it's, it's based out of there. So We've seen a bit. There, so. A bit. Um, some automotive vaporware coming out of the Middle East area, mm. cars that have been promised and never delivered, mm. um, or I never mean, quite been what we thought they'd be. Do you yeah. think this would just put the viability of this company so, generally? Out? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're offering it in three different guises. So there's Coupe, which they expect for the UK to be, um, there's the Roadster, and then there's the Aero, which again has no windscreen like the Elva or has a very There must, little, a there must be something aerodynamic kind of thing, about so. it if, must if be. more people are doing um, it. And. Yeah, I don't know. There's, um, it, it's it's one of those things. Anthony Gianarelli says on the thing, um, founded by automotive designer Anthony Gianarelli and racing boat builder Frederick Juillo. Ju- 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 I'm gonna go with that. In 2016. So, and there are you look on 
uh, Twitter and there are various sort of videos and things of, of the car being driven around the place so there's at least one or two of them in existence I think and yeah don't well, know just it's a it's a nice thing it doesn't sound completely most of these things when they are pie in the sky it has got some ridiculous price tag and you think well this never what's the point buy one yeah. thing. but this feels quite it's nice, nice like to it. be discussing a car that has fairly out there looks and, and mm. limited run that is in the realm of reality absolutely yes um so well, the we'll design need, one we'll need to look out for more information on that we'll yep. bring that to you as it comes now the unavoidables happened we're going to have to start talking about some SUVs <laughs> because frankly we the we have to keep up and the world is flooded with them I don't yes. even know where to start which one do you want to go with first I don't know um, well we sort of should we talk about the ones that we've done videos because there was a yes. moment where the car affection channel suddenly looked like it had turned into the SUV I got a tweet about it from somebody and sort of went I'm really sorry and said, if we're going to go back to sports cars but that that's the way the unveiling cookie crumbles sometimes. And yeah, and the so. thing is, even the luxury cars can be SUVs, yeah. so it's, yeah, yeah. it doesn't yeah. necessarily preclude us from, uh, even if we just covered the, the top tier manufacturers. Yeah, anyway, um, first up was DBX, that was the first one that we video released, which mm -hmm. is obviously Aston Martin. Yeah. DBX, which I went to see out in southern Spain, an amazing place actually, because I didn't get to mention this in the film, so, you know, the car, hopefully you've seen the video exciting for us yeah it's our that. first yeah, proper yeah, look at the car um but this is at somewhere called calvert studios uh which there's a calvert studios in leighton buzzard in fact where we've we've shot, shot many times before exactly yeah. um in a big warehouse or whatever um uh this was the sort of the outdoor version of that so it's like a big helipad it's like a tarmac endless pool sort of um basically up in infinity the, the pool exactly yeah. and uh it's um just a really cool place to go to and they've got an outside studio as well which is like standing in the in an empty swimming pool um, sort of down there with big white walls around <coughs> you so that was just quite a cool place to, to go to I'd always known about mm. it and never been uh, the DBX itself yeah I think it looks good from the front I don't really like the rear of it I'm looking at the rear right now mm. it's, it's kind of got it's heavy it's like it's two different cars mm. bolted together there's an upper part which feels like like a like a duke and then there's a lower part that feels like an Aston Martin Vantage and yeah. the two have been sandwiched on top of each other like it can't quite figure out how it wants the air to I flow I mean that's sort of the angle you've got on your laptop now is kind of a low down yeah. rear three quarters so it's not how you would see so it's not car. how you'd see it and, and actually I think that's that's quite an interesting point because the first time I saw the car um, I actually saw a styling buck you know a while ago and it, it was from from my height so I'm six foot five I thought oh, okay it looks okay sort of it looks a bit sort of this slightly awkward perhaps and then actually as you come down sort of further and sort of perhaps to i don't know five foot eight five foot ten sort of you it changes the sort of really? it's quite a sort of it's quite a sculptural car like that actually it's, it's interesting the angles you look at from and how um how different it, it can look so it's yeah. quite interesting because uh, mark reichman head of design at as tall. Martin, is tall yeah, yeah. so yeah. He, maybe that's how he's seen <laughs> it and perhaps they're all standing there sort of maybe hands on got, knees just sort of you know, maybe he's got a series of holes he can stand <laughs> in to make him lower <laughs> to observe his, his handiwork yeah um we haven't driven it yet. Uh, we're presuming that the proper drive of the first fully formed car will be in the spring. So mm -hmm. we'll have to wait until then to see how it actually is to drive. Yep. Although we might have some insights a little bit sooner than that. So stay uh, uh, subscribed to the YouTube channel for more information on that. And that's as much as I'm going to say mm -hmm. about that right What do you now. think of the one thing that I just will say about that is yeah. the interior which is obviously what i made it on the yeah thing. i mean it, it has to step it up it's a, it's a by by definition even over a grand tour it has to have a, a more accomplished interior that's going to satisfy you from a comfort and, and usability yeah. point of view and things like the infotainment system start to become more important even yeah. more than on a gt car and i think they, they definitely it's the best equipped an upholstered and uh, endowed interior mm. I think Aston Martin have done in recent years and it looks from a design perspective because you look at the sort of the door panel of a um, DB11 say and it was quite bitty really with sort of all sorts of things yeah. going on lots of different materials and stuff and actually with these leather covered speakers which sounds really weird you know oh, why would they do that but actually it makes the interior look much nicer much more cohesive um, as for that so yeah and the panoramic roof which is standard as well gives it a nice airy feeling so yeah intriguing. yeah i think uh, i think 
Aston Martin Interiors, they've struggled a bit. Uh, for me, with the placement of the infotainment system, mm. even like it was that really ugly kind of flip up stuff. That was the Volvo one, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, it was horrible. And then the Mercedes one just felt a bit bolted on for a while mm. as well. And now it, it's beginning to, with, they've got more space to, to play with and it's a bit more mature in how they're integrating that technology into their own platform. And it's feeling more whole I do I'm yeah. a sucker for a tan interior and, and so that, that always kind of <laughs> catches my eye it, yeah. which is the car you had yeah. um, but you know it still has to drive well so we'll uh, we'll, we'll wait until we uh, actually get a chance to do that and experience it yeah um, right what's next on the SUV RSQ8 RSQ8 yes you yeah. had a chance to check that out a while ago but we've, ago, we've only yes. just put the film out yeah. now it was all um, embargo in a fantastic color, I might say. Yes. Um, a l- lime green, vibrant, viper green. Apple green or something like that, wasn't it? It's very green. Very, um, yes. Yeah. I, I edited that film and I, I, I may have uh, made sure the colors were as punchy <laughs> as they could be. But that's basically what the car looked like. It's uh, it's an impressive, impressive car. I, I really like kind of the design language that um, Audi is employing at the moment. And, yeah. and, it, and it, there's a lot of places for it to shine in that car because it's pretty damn big. And I, I, like, I like stripping out some of the chrome as well, which yeah. seems to be a, seems to be a trend at the moment is, yeah, is getting away from it i'm sure we'll talk about rs6 but you can see that very much on the front of that yeah. one with the black pack makes a big there. difference it, just, yeah. it does yeah again it makes it simpler bolder overall doesn't it mm. so yeah and and there's a car that i think that's got kind of a consistent feel and design from front to back and, and mm. feels like everything's very very purposeful mm. again these things are going to be insanely quick when you actually take them out on the road yeah um this is a uh, part of a a three day shoot well a three film day shoot yes because I wish it had three days Um, (laughs) it was was in and out very much within a day I flew out and back in a day yeah and shot all the RS6 RSQ3 and the RSQ8 yeah so um, um, having known nothing about any of them before I got on the plane either so uh, RSQ8 um, we're not going to be able to shoot a film on just yet we'll have some written stuff going up on uh, the website before Christmas Um, but RSQ3 on the other hand we will yes yes I'm driving that next week in fact yeah so so probably about the time that you're uh, watching or listening to this you'll be gearing up to do that what are your expectations what you're expecting to get out of that car I don't know I said well as I said in the um, film we did of it it's it's one of the things it's got that great engine in it that um, inline five cylinder so that always sounds good and I'm intrigued the, the way I'm thinking about it at the moment is actually some of the sometimes because you've got that bit more ride height you actually get the sort of the travel and the suspension that's where they work well is you get that more travel and suspension bit more body roll and because the RSQ3 should be well it is small compared to RSQ8 and most of these SUVs they, they sort of don't make sense to start with you come out and say oh, well, why do that you're just, you're just making an SUV out of everything but sometimes you can end up with actually not a bad driver's car mm. because it's it's small enough that you can fit down a, a road and it's not got too much bulk to kind of cope with but you've got the suspension travel to um, enjoy and use and cope with a you know, British B road or whatever so yeah if it sounds good and Audi seems to RS seems to have been getting better again so it could be it could be a pretty cool thing might not be might be a dud because to be honest you just don't know with Audi Sport sometimes they'll pull a rabbit out of a hat and you sort of think wow where did where on earth did this come from um and then other times you're going this should be absolutely brilliant you know TT Mm -hmm. you think you've got every opportunity to make this brilliant little cool looking thing drive really well and it it's just always felt a bit behind the curve and not really what you want it to be and uh, yet you drive other stuff you know rs4 or whatever and go wow this is this is amazing so yeah you never quite know uh, which is why you can never you never prejudge um stuff before you actually get behind the wheel exactly well this week uh, coming up you'll get an opportunity to figure that out more definitively yep. and uh nail your colors to the flag as it were in that car <laughs> yes. um uh, the third car that you saw there was the rs6 but we'll touch on that a little bit later on okay um going through more trucks it's been the la motor show um mm-hmm. this week and there's been lots of stuff coming out but two of the most interesting cars have been um suvs slash trucks mm-hmm. um on the suv front ford 
Oh, you're uh, going there first, right. I'm, okay, going, yeah. I'm going there first before the, the real craziness. Um, the Mustang Mark E. Mm-hmm. Um, they've called it a Mustang. Uh, they've called it a Mark as well, which also has connotations. Yep. Uh, and it is an SUV and it's all electric. Now, there's a lot to kind of unbox from that as a concept. Um, so this is this is Ford deciding to say, from here on out, the Mustang is more of a brand name rather mm-hmm. than a specific car. I was always very, I always admired Ford for how unprotected they are of their branding. They, <laughs> their logo appears in like eight different ways on current generations of cars, whether you've yeah. got a truck or the blue oval is just one way uh, to do it. The Mustang doesn't really have Ford written anywhere on it anymore. In fact, sometimes it doesn't even have like Mustang that much written on it. They'll happily put a Cobra on it instead of a pony. <laughs> They're very open about that. But now they've gone, oh yeah, Mustang now can also be an SUV. Like, yeah. Hmm. I mean, from a from a marketing strategy, brilliant. Because it, it was, well, it was. So the day that that was launched, yeah. I mean, it was on the BBC website. Yes. It grabbed a lot of attention. It I, grabbed I, I an grant awful you that. lot of attention. So Dave, from that point of view, it's been a massive success for them yeah. because it was it was everywhere that car. From a, you know, if somebody else produces an electric SUV, yeah, I, and they have, and, yeah. they, and obviously they have. And apart from the other one, which we'll get onto in a in a minute, it, it's sort of then given that they weren't going to, you know, have some not bulletproof bulletproof glass or whatever. They 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 have done an exceptionally good job for an actual car a normal car and putting yeah. it out there everybody I, it looks I haven't seen it in the metal it looks a little bit awkward in some pictures but everybody I can see why people are saying oh it looks so much better yeah. in the metal if that makes sense so you can see why a car actually would look yeah. um, pretty good so yeah I, I think I think looks wise if you take out the Mustang element it's by just, the way just, can I just get so they did a brilliant job with the marketing of it to do that. I wish they hadn't. Yes. <laughs> that, <laughs> so just, that, just in case, because yeah. I suddenly thought that people were going to think, he's backing them up, he's saying they should have. No. No, no I, they, I they, think we're on the same wave. Like, they I shouldn't think, have done. I think Clever, but no. I think in all honesty, I think that they've got a really great product. I think they've got a car that is an attractive looking, distinct looking SUV that if, uh, if it can be as if it can be reliable, if it can do the um, distances that they're saying, uh, and it's quite well equipped on the interior, screen placement of the interior is a little bit iffy. Um, and we have a video on our sister site, The Roadshow, which I can highly recommend that you check out because a very in-depth walk around, which was shot before the show, so they're in a studio, so they got a really good look at the car. Um, I think it's a car that's strong enough to stand on its own in the same way that I think the e-tron is a car that that, that is strong enough to st- stand up on its own uh, and the i-pace is strong enough to stand up on its own mm-hmm. and and tapping into um, not even like related to no they've literally said this is a Mustang there's a yeah. pony on the front of this car mm. um, but I wonder if they've done that because they perhaps they they knew they thought hang on a minute, we, we were onto something here this is going to be really really good how are we going to actually make people yeah stand up and take notice of it it's a bit like i know if, if i had a, a child that was re- i discovered at age 10 i thought wow he's a really good girlfriend i went took him down the um you know council officers and said right i'm changing your name you're going to be tiger catchpole now just to make everybody sit up sit and pay attention, and pay attention. Sort of. i think i think this i think there's some validity in that i think there's on the one hand there's you could say the tactic is let's give it the Mustang name. It'll get a lot of attention. People, some people who would never buy a sports car can buy this and and say, "I drive a Mustang." <laughs> There's that element to it. The hopeful part of me is thinking, okay, maybe this is just to kind of soften the idea in people's heads of an all-electric traditional Mustang, so that now we've had an electric Mustang, so now it won't be the first electric Mustang. Yeah. So they can now take a step back and then start to convert that car. And the days of the Mustang GT, of that kind of car, are numbered. Eventually, those kind of cars are going to go down electrification route. That, that seems fairly obvious. Um, so this feels like it could be a stepping stone. If that is the primary thinking, I give them a pass. If it's the other side, I'm like, no, you shouldn't crap on your legacy like that. Um, especially when the Mustang is now on the upswing. Do it in the 90s when it's terrible yeah, 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 um, yeah. or the early 2000s when the cars were absolutely shocking. 
fair enough but now the Mustang is like on the way up it's like yeah. it's, it's in a good place yeah. um, and I drove the uh, the bullet Mustang recently for oh, the, yes, yeah, for the video that, that we did on yeah. uh, we shot an entire film we, this fell between episodes of I did it. Foot Lock so right. we didn't discuss it last time we shot an entire film using an iPhone I'll put a link in the description below we'd love to know you guys watching uh, Foot Lock and you know this you are our best fans and watch all of our stuff and we'd love you for it and we, listen to and listen to the podcast as well um, if you can go and check out that and see what you think of something that we shoot on just on an iPhone uh, I'd be interested to see what you think, um, and and we'll come to it in a minute. But how it contrasts with something like the RS six film, ah, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes, well, more on that later. So yeah, the Mark E, those two. I think what they have is a great car. I think it's a very positive step for the company Ford, the company Ford. Uh, I think it's a um, the right thing everyone should be doing. SUVs, what everyone's building, it makes perfect sense. I think if I think it will probably drive quite well. I think they're going to have a good car. I just don't like that they've called it a Mustang, and that's maybe just the kind of old cantankerous <laughs> like car person in me because it does does spoil that name. And we've seen it happen to other names in the past, especially adding the mark onto it as well because yeah, those yeah. were like the yeah. most legendary of the yeah. the Mustang. Anyway, <laughs> let's go to the thing that everyone was talking about from the LA Motor Show, the Tesla Cybertruck. Yes. WTF was that. Yes, the truck version of the Aston Martin Bulldog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or every car in Total Recall. I mean, I haven't seen too many people make that direct connection, but every car in that was like... Mm. That. If you haven't seen it because you've been under a rock, Tesla unveiled the Cybertruck, which is not technically an SUV, but their pickup truck version, which has zero curves, is a cubist yeah. um, nightmare of a... It's a pedestrian impact nightmare. It's, I mean, it, it feels I'm, like I'm you a, could cut yourself on it. Yeah. Um, it's They were trying to demonstrate that the windows were very strong uh, by throwing something at it, and which smashed immediately so yes. that clearly still needs some work and then they tried it to get it they doubled down on it doubled down yeah. and then it yeah. did and, and i've i've been <laughs> i've been at demonstrations where people have had things that are bulletproof <laughs> or shockproof and then we've tried it out and it hasn't and it's always embarrassing but you know <laughs> particularly for, uh, for the person wearing the vest obviously. exactly exactly <laughs> well the man the man who invented the bulletproof vest proved it by wearing his own vest and having someone shoot him that's confidence people that is paid off um, his name <laughs> was Mr. Bulletproof Vest. <laughs> we now know all of that as the Bulletproof Vest. Um, I thought it was designed by Caroline Flack, but yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, also um, possible. Um, yeah. yeah, it's Tesla make very good electric cars, or they make the, the most electric cars uh, and sell the most. Uh, people love them. They do mostly on the whole their job pretty well. And now they've got a pickup truck. And whereas the S, the three and the x all felt like they were built on the same planet this doesn't even feel like it was built in the same century no. it, it it it's even more out there than most concept cars yes if that was shown as a concept you'd be like and that's it, totally ridiculous we could never have anything like this and this is a final like car like this is what they're proposing but it kind of looked like it had the functionality of a concept car because did you see when they there's a picture of somewhere of having driven that atv um up onto the back of it which they'd also designed. Did you see the sag in the rear suspension? Did it go right I down? I mean, it's, just, it's literally it's just it's pl like planing like a speedboat, basically. Yeah, well, those ATVs thinking, well, are quite... quite. Yeah, heavy. but that's not what... You know, that's not what it's meant to do, is it? If you have a truck, you have the stiff, yeah. supportive rear suspension so that you can use the load bed. And this thing looked like it just... They'd just put the same springs all the way around, and kind of that was... Mm. That was it. It was very odd, I thought. Also, kind of just going back to the... Mustang slightly because it, but it's linked to the Tesla yeah. because the Mustang interior I saw what's going on with the an, another massive great I has nobody got any imagination for what the interior of an electric car can be like no big screen seemed to be and the, it just the infuriates me I mean the, come on to RS6 well that's got touch screens there which you can kind of vaguely get used to but I just think I, when I took my driving test I actually I failed my first driving test because there was a massive downpour in the summer. The whole thing steamed up, and you're meant to be able to reach all the controls for demisting windscreens and all that sort of stuff without looking, without you know, without looking away from the road, or at least only 
very briefly like that and it should be better you should be able to do mm. it just driving along reach down and there's a which you can do with a switch because you feel you can find it touch screen just don't know you no just as likely to call somebody as turn up the heating or whatever so so why did you fail your test could you not find the switch oh, i couldn't find you know i was driving the instructor's car that i'd sort of you spent time it's not right. something you necessarily spend an awful lot of time trying to do but so you didn't pass go. on your first try no didn't pass on my first try neither did i so there we go i passed on my fourth it was <laughs> right yeah i mean I had a good reason, I think, for kind of, and it and wasn't, and presumably, wasn't necessarily. <laughs> presumably, you were seventeen as well. I was, yes. I was twenty-two before I got my driver's license. Were you? Yeah, oh, I you couldn't go. afford lessons until I was that age. In the UK, you definitely need to take lessons mm. before you can drive. It's not like in the US where we have driver's ed or stuff like that. And, mm, okay. and yeah. I couldn't afford lessons until I was uh, I graduated and I had a job. So twenty-two. There we are. Um, anyway, the, just the the whole touchscreen thing. I'm sure I brought it up before, but. No, just I found it on the Panamera as well. Like there was even on the the Panamera, the, there was even a touch screen to adjust the vents, mm. the the position of the vents, which usually you just manipulate yeah. the vents by hand. So yeah, uh, there is there. I think we have gone a bit too far, and we're now seeing a, a, a more buttons come back into some cars, and they'll find they'll find a balance. Yeah. Um, but the 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 Tesla Cybertruck. I mean, they've called it the Cybertruck, which kind of suggests I mean it's a very apt name it's mm. well named um, uh, Killdozer or anything any names like that would have been appropriate um, it's one of those things isn't Blade it Blade Wheel <laughs> as soon as it came out it it's done what all Teslas do it is polarised opinion mm. and except that I don't really but not just polarized it the people who love it are going crazy for it and the people who hate it are going absolutely crazy for it that's so what put, polarizing is I know it? but it not just puts them in one camp or another it yeah. pushes those camps as yeah, far apart as they yeah because there's the two poles on a yeah. like north and south like yeah. as far away as you can get yeah polarizing okay that's, that's, that's okay. not okay. it it's split opinion it's polarized <laughs> okay but it's put one pole on one planet and another pole on another planet <laughs> It's uber polarized. It's, it, it's them. interplanetary, <laughs> interplanetarily polarized. Them. There you go. I like that. Okay, Excellent. that's a copyright Drew Stone. That phrase. <laughs> you have to pay to use it. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's too much. I, I, I think it's the car that people are going to go crazy for, and no one will actually buy. I mean, I'll probably eat those words, but um, I. To anyone who's not in our bubble. Mm. They're going to see this on the news, and everyone's going to go, "That looks ridiculous." <laughs> and out of all the trucks available in the US, and there are tons. Yes, there's some there's some great looking trucks out there. There's yeah. some horrible looking trucks, but there's some mm. great looking trucks. And it's the people who buy them. I don't know if I'm making yeah. a, a huge general generalization here. I don't think the people who buy trucks are the most um, have the most flair. Are, are like the most into sci-fi this is, this is lovely watching you try and work out how not to offend <laughs> an awful trying lot to, of people trying to phrase it the right <laughs> way if you're the kind of person who's interested in buying a truck yeah you are the kind of person who's into buying a truck not having a spaceship yes i mean they're utilitarian vehicles aren't they so you yeah. that's that's primarily what you think a truck should be i've realized i don't even know if it's single cab or double cab no, I've no idea. It looks like a single cab, which is even. It's, Should it's we stop talking about it? I, I, I kind of I just because it, it's insane. Yeah, it's there insane. we go. If you want to carry a lot of stuff around in the US, yes, there is now another option. There is. God, there there is not just one. another option. There is now the best option <laughs> because the Audi R6 Avant is now available in the USA, and we've done a video with it, taking it, introducing it to a few of the sights and sounds of the USA. Yeah, as we're as we're recording this. Um, on Thursday, the video has just gone live, so um, it's just gone out into the world. And I have to say that you guys have done a stellar job, absolutely brilliant. It's one of the best films that we've ever done uh, on Carfection in our almost was almost eight year history. <laughs> so um, I, I definitely think um, that you should check it out if you haven't. It's a spectacular film. Take the car on a huge road trip. I don't want to go into too much detail because you just need to watch it, but the car. It is... Mm. I mean, wagons, it felt like were huge in the US for the longest time and then just pff, 
disappeared yes. like a yeah. cloudburst, and now uh, they're coming back. In yeah. particular, this RS6. Now, we used to have an RS6 long termer on the Carfection team, and we loved it. The RS6 has always been a car that that we've been super grateful to have, and the US has been super um, envious. Why have Audi finally brought it to the US? Uh, because of customer demand, I think is essentially the thing. So people real in the customer US, demand or fanboys on the internet customer demand? I, I assume real customer demand because otherwise I, I can't see a company as big as Audi just you know, um, bowing to sort of um, a few few tweets or something like that. So you, yeah, I, I think genuinely they've thought, why not? Why shouldn't we take it to the US? And uh, yeah, hopefully. It's, It'll sell well out there. If it does, you'll get more. It's it's simple as. Uh, if it doesn't, then they'll just go back and, and, and they'll pull it. Yeah. Um, now, the R6 was always a fantastic car, but mm-hmm. what are some of uh, the points that makes this different from the last generation in it, a nutshell? It's the, it's the agility, I think. Uh, it's a big thing. I mean, yes, there's the... Um, the the hybrid the mild hybrid element that sort of gives it a little more efficiency in terms of being able to coast yep. um, on the motorway and stuff like that and it's got this very weird which I know people will pick up yeah. on this, this vibrating um, throttle pedal which as I say sounds horrible but actually it's kind of it's does just it, does it feel like ABS vibration no it's not sort of it's not it's not horrible it's just a little sort of you obviously not, you not, feel not like a crunchy foot, feeling no no, no 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 it's just a um it is a little bit sort of like the um, vibration through the steering wheel but because it's through your foot it doesn't irritate you quite so much okay um and it's essentially just helping you out with uh you know if, if you're ever trying to do particularly trying to do an economy run then the biggest thing you can do is if you know you're coming up to a junction or you're coming to turn off and it's safe to do so then um you just lift off and you'll let the car it's lift and coast isn't it it's mm. what we had in F1 for um, fuel saving all yeah. the time it's it's as simple as that and this does it this just helps you because if it sees on the sat nav that you've got you know, route planned and you're coming up and in half a mile there's a junction you're going to have to turn right at and you're doing 60 miles an hour it'll just say right half mile at half a mile to go it'll little vibration through the foot and then we go oh okay right so I'll just you know, there's nobody behind me I'll just you can coast up and um, that's it yeah. will I mean that, that's fuel. that's a subtle encouragement, but you mentioned that it has in its auto stop start the ability to cut the engine at speeds below fourteen miles an hour. Yes. Yeah. So you're still moving, yep. and the engine cuts out. Yep. Is that safe? I mean, yeah, presumably it's, it's, they couldn't have sold it if it wasn't safe. But ha- can they guarantee a much quicker? Yeah, I mean, it does like, the same obviously up? between thirty four and ninety nine miles an hour as well. You know, it will shut the engine down. It will shut. Yeah. I and mean, not just, si- no. not just cylinder shut off. It will shut the engine down, yeah. as in no engine, no uh, fuels flowing yeah. into the engine right. at all. Right. So, and it will restart. I mean, that a couple of years ago that would have been <laughs> terrible because you you <laughs> couldn't in an emergency if you needed to accelerate yeah. away from something you'd need like your throttle response yeah. to be as quick as it always is. But you're saying now that even with the engine turned off. You can yep. turn it on, start it in a way that is so seamless. Because I find in most cars that I drive with auto stop, start it at standstill, it's not seamless. But see, that's the that is the brilliance of these mild, mild hybrid, hybrid systems. Ones. So this is what the E53, yeah, my long termer has, and that's why I've sung the praises of its stop start system because it finally does what you want a stop start system to do mm-hmm. in terms of actually having that speed of re-engaging the engine um, that you wouldn't otherwise have. So yeah, that's that's why I think it's it's. It's good, um, but yeah. But apart from the hybrid stuff, it's the agility of the car, uh, which you know I think we had a car that was fully spec'd, um, but also kind of pretty much perfectly spec'd. I think I might have gone for the slightly smaller wheels rather than the uh, 22s that we had. But um, the dynamic steering, which now comes with the rear wheel steer as mm-hmm. well, uh, gives it much more agility. So it makes it feel much more like the latest RS4. Uh, which was surprisingly sort of the way it would get into a corner and you feel the rear really help you in. Yeah. Um, and then with the sport diff on the rear axle as well, you've got that, you know, again, helping on the way out of the corner, making it feel that much more dynamic. So, yeah, it's it's just... I don't think it's that much faster in a straight line, particularly because you don't really need to go faster than the previous one. It was one already in pretty line. quick, it was already, yeah. uh, So it's kind of fine-tuning it in some respects but it's also you know it's, it's 
amped it up in the way it looks because it's got those um, does look good. those lights yeah. from the RS7 uh, lower bonnet those big box arches it's really it's gone to town on that it's sort of um, it's, it's definitely not Q car um, it's so yeah oh, it's, it's great it's a spectacular car and a spectacular film on it I urge you all to check it out if you only watch one car fiction film this month make sure it's that one well, one uh, thing which we, we could put in there because we didn't put it in the main film because it just didn't quite fit was there's a nice option talking of all these sort of touch screens and stuff and lots of things going on in the cabin there is an option in it uh, because it's got the digital display for the dash for a reduced display so if you put it in the RS mode and you get this sort of the cool little rev counter up there menu on the left down to the bottom reduce display and it just takes pretty much everything away apart from the speed oh. the rev counter and then you've got uh, oil temp thankfully nice so you can tell it's what's going on there um, and yeah so it just just keeps it all nice and simple not too much going on and um, yeah I just thought it was a really nice nice thing we've got some footage of that so, so like for night driving just to kind of simplify yeah, it down yeah or on a good good piece of road when you don't want you know you know where you're mm. going you don't need all the distractions there so you don't need to have the sat nav up there and the you know what radio station you're on or anything like it's just just straightforward um, so yeah I thought that was that was a nice a nice thing um, to have in the car brilliant um, and the car is spectacular the film is spectacular and it allowed you to see uh, Death Valley one of the hottest driest <laughs> and <laughs> it, was Death, it, was, it was Death Valley National Park so actually in Death Valley itself yeah there wasn't snow which yeah. is what you're about to say but but nonetheless in death valley national park there was snow um, and there's still death raining valley. in death valley which is extraordinary enough in itself but yeah the snow up high was just weird crazy mm. absolutely crazy mm. um that film is up now um absolutely stunning piece of film uh, best representation of what we can do on car fiction and an interesting contrast between that and the um uh, mustang bullet video um, <laughs> both because you'll see the difference between me and Henry and you'll be able to see the difference between a um, it was, it a was also shot actually on very limited camera oh yeah yeah in terms but of what we had with us which um, we'll get Charlie in to talk about it at Char time so. Charlie um, had borrowed a particular camera from Panasonic for this shoot uh, which he's was very happy with and, and so we'll <laughs> yeah. probably get him on in one of the random bolt on sections on Footlock to, to talk about that yeah, uh, so he can same cover it um that's it we've uh the other films that went up were on the site recently we've had another film uh uh the ford gt which you took out on track mm -hmm. yep uh and we've got a your questions answered on the mclaren gt from when i drove it a couple of months ago mm -hmm. also worth checking out um in terms of stuff coming up we've already spoken about you driving the um RSQ3. RSQ3. Yep. Later in December, we'll be looking at BMW uh, M8. Yes. As well, we'll be adding to that list uh, and a few other bits and pieces as well. A lot more to cram in before the Christmas break. Mm -hmm. um, long termers, you're still running your Mercedes. Yes, as I mentioned, still it's going back fairly soon actually. So, um, still enjoying it. It's still doing a grand job. Um, biggest thing i discovered the other day was that uh, and this is really i, I mean it, it sounds like i'm scraping the barrel but i don't really like ambient lights inside yeah they're all different done it now so when you turn the heating up or down the vents they glow red if you turn it up i blew it that's a nice touch it's, it's nice it links back to the, R, the rs6 actually does something similar i noticed um when we shot the segment in vegas at mm -hmm. goodness knows what time of night before we had our three hours sleep um but yeah it reminded me of, of that and it just just amused me so yeah still enjoying the e53 um and we'll probably do a we're going to shoot in the next couple of weeks uh of sort of a wrap-up film with, with in fact all the sort of tech stuff on that and my sort of final thoughts of what it's been like to to live with um so yeah um we'll Brilliant. do a, any your questions answered or something like that as well yep. I think so but if you have got any questions then looking at that camera yeah I'm not very good at this um, the one that's pointing straight, straight at straight your at face me, yeah. Yeah. So I know, well they're all kind of looking at me aren't they that one isn't all, oh, don't look, oh, no. anyway if you have any particular questions let us know in the comments below this and I'll try and check those out as well yes as we did with my current long term which is the the Kia Sportage uh, I answered a bunch of questions in that uh, if you have any more questions obviously also leave them below um, but this this last like eight day period 
I've been driving that a lot. I've been going, I've been doing training on the opposite side of London. So I've been driving from southeast London to west of London, either mm. around the bottom or around the top of the uh, M25, um, and put on hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of miles on that car spent hours i was spending about three to four hours commuting a day in in the car um and what's kind of struck me is that just how comfortable and how relaxed i've been every time i've got to the location so it's definitely not the quickest car we've spoken about the throttle response which is definitely one of its downsides when traveling at speed um uh, that's less of an issue. Um, I know if I come up to a junction, I need to pull away quick. I do put it in sport mode, which cuts out the auto stop start, which makes up for a lot of it. Um, what I have found at slow speeds is that the brakes are really grabby. <laughs> They're really grabby. It's like, you know, when you've got um, a sports car that's got like carbon ceramics fitted. AMG and, GTR Pro. Yeah. I've, I've spent a bit of time in that recently, and, and that's that's a car that is, feels like it's. it's well, if, it feels like you kind of you get on track with that car. And it's fine because you can just yeah. smash into the brakes and it'll be fine. But any of the rest of the time, it's just yeah, yeah. They just they want difficult wanna, to modulate. They want to grab yeah. So at, at very slow speeds, it is a little bit. So you look a little bit like a less experienced driver, <laughs> which I which I promise is down like to you the at twenty two. Yeah, like me yeah. at twenty two, yeah. um, <laughs> and twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. Um, uh, no, the 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 brakes are a bit grabby and that's the biggest downside of a fan to the car so if you're in really stop start traffic um there is a little bit of that and i'm also having trouble at the moment uh, getting the um it's got smart cruise control and okay. i can't i've done something i've changed something that means i can't it says um requirements not met so i have there's something okay. i've turned off and i can't right. remember what i've turned off that means i can't engage it. i'm like what? i'm not a fan of smart cruise control all the sort of the the, the distance control ones and then the ones that so this is something I, I don't really like about the e53 is that it's got this and i it recognizes the speed limit signs as well so yep. you can set it to several cars do this now you know adapt to when yep. it sees different if you're going along a motorway particularly here, frequently there might be a sign off to the side which is actually relating to a road next to the motorway. If it picks that up... It slows you down. It'll slow you down. Yeah. And that's not cool. I, I, I wanted to just test it more than anything. Yeah. Um, the lane keep assist is pretty good. Yep. Um, you know, it insists that you keep your hands on the wheels, which is the safe way to do it. But doing a lot of kind of quite slow speed motorway driving, it was one of the better systems for keeping me in the middle of the lane because quite a, the, a lot of the early systems you'd be like just <laughs> drifting to the left and then drifting to the right <laughs> you, and then back again you're basically like a bowling ball with the, when you've got the bumpers yeah, with the bumpers, the side, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. whereas this did, has done a much better job of actually keeping you in and when it turns it doesn't like it, 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 little yeah. bits it, it, it's been really good but it's just been so it's, it's been nice to have uh, um, uh, access to a car to, to do this every day and um as still one of the more affordable cars that we've done, I've absolutely loved having it and uh, and really comfortable. I haven't put I've put we've got another long term with the Volvo. I haven't I haven't put any miles on that yet. That's mm. all been uh, Charlie yeah. and George have been doing the driving on that, uh, and they have shot a film on that car which will be coming out soon. But so far the Kia Sportage, uh, uh, I'm enjoying it very much. Talking about comments below here or comments in general, which we were earlier, um, I've suddenly thought somebody got in contact with me and I can't for life remember where I don't think it was Twitter it might have been Instagram um, it might have been below here wherever it was I'm sorry I couldn't find to, to reply at the time somebody asked where to get the um, um, yep. artwork on our wall which is Joel Clark artist so that's Joel Clark artist uh, so yes that's that's where you can get the posters from there yeah he's got a huge selection of, of like really yeah, really cool looking cars definitely worth checking out uh, and thank you again Joel we've got a couple of these images we've got just that one up at the moment someone commented last week that we had the Lego um, GT3 RS <laughs> up here and the spoiler was set at the oh, wrong angle yeah. and they were like you can see what it's meant to be right there <laughs> I was like oh, sorry but I think Charlie nicked it I don't know where it's gone I was in GT3 RS again recently and it just the, the rear wing on it is so every time I see it it's so large yeah. you just can't believe that they kind of get away with it whenever it's we filmed with it we've used it as a picnic table for lunch <laughs> yeah. in the lunch break you got I, I think last time i drove one was a we were doing a big shoot in um michigan uh at a track called gingerman and uh someone went on a run to i think taco bell and came back and we just laid out all the tacos <laughs> on the wing and just used it as a table because it's a perfect kind of height to yeah. eat while standing up 
Brilliant guy. Um, were there any other actual car-related things you wanted to talk about before so. we start talking about random stuff? I think that was stuff. it, because we, we've, we've been sort of... Yeah, it's not that long since we did the last one. No, it's one. been great, so, so we yeah. can actually keep this a little bit more streamlined. Yeah. Um, uh, random things I've been trying, or the random chat. I, I had music last time, and I can't remember <laughs> how it goes, so I'll just start it playing now. <laughs> Yay, it's time for Carfection Random Rambles. Um, I uh, In the UK, they've recently changed the law and um, have decriminalized cbd based products which is cannabis oil right. based products um and although they've been uh legalized you can buy them in you can buy them in holland and barrett now oh. um uh, in in many different forms they can only now legally start testing it for its actual benefits all they can prove now is that it's safe Okay. So it's 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 like it's like basically cannabis, but with with the THC removed. So mm-hmm. it doesn't have any of the active stuff that gives the the drug effect. But it it right. they they claim that it might have a lot of the health benefits associated with it, helping okay. with anxiety and and stress and pain relief and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, I, I had a stressful week coming up because I had a lot of work to do, um, including not one but two stand up shows this week, um, and so I've been trying. Uh, CBD chewing gum uh, and as of yet uh, I can't tell it's done <laughs> it's, a, it's a fairly uh, you have destroyed the entire contents of your fridge but apart from that you can't tell no no literally like no discernible basically I think it's like like herbal tea like it might be doing something disgusting but it, yeah right. no no it's, it's, it's just mint <laughs> chewing gum it doesn't taste any All different right. from, if you gave it to someone they wouldn't be able to tell any difference um but so I am going to. St- I, I did look up, and you can get stronger doses of it in oils and stuff. I went, eh, I'll try some 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 stronger doses because I was having separately. I was having some health issues which I was uh, uh, dealing with, and I've been prescribed painkillers for that. I went, hey, if I can find something that's yeah. that's less chemical to give it a go, because um, uh, a, a friend of mine who actually used to do PR for Volvo has now got a PR agency and her agency represents a company that did it so she mentioned it on Facebook I was like oh so I went and ordered some and it came in and it's like it's it's just slightly expensive chewing gum doesn't make me feel worse and right now I'll well, take there we go. <laughs> okay <laughs> chew um, this it won't make you feel worse um, <laughs> it's kind of a, but yeah I, it's hard to do probably a scientific not the slogan they're going for no I think I think not but uh, yeah so that's a thing that's happening in the UK right now I'm kind of I suppose if, if well we're going down that route then coffee yeah, is obviously something. That's any, your drug any, of choice. Anybody, anybody that follows me on Instagram knows that, coffee or is watches my thing, any so. of your carfection films. Yeah, pretty much. Actually, yeah. To be fair, um, I love coffee. It's just it's one of those things. I think because I don't drink that much alcohol, or you can't in this job for a start because I can't go and get smashed on a weekday night because I'm probably going to be out driving a car tomorrow morning. So, um, but I love coffee. I've kind of really got into it over the last few years, and um, in fact, it's so there's a YouTube channel called James Hoffman who does and he's just really cool he's really really geeky about it I've been watching loads of that and um, the nice thing is because wherever we go as well in the world so when we did RS6 pretty much the first thing we had to go and do was actually go and get coffee um, from Blue Bottle I think it was um, had a very nice single origin from, from there uh, but wherever we've got we're testing cars I, I like the fact that I now look up where the local coffee shop is and um it's going to do something different and uh, yeah so that's when that's what i've been mostly doing recently is finding lots and lots of coffee and getting quite geeky about that brilliant henry getting geeky is is like the ultimate way of getting geeky so <laughs> i'm sure follow henry on instagram for your your coffee recommendations i, I actually watched an entire film on the way across to you know, say called barista which is all about the barista world championships and it was really good. I, I, if you I like coffee. I, I, I just I like coffee nice shot as well. I like coffee. I once had uh, a coffee tasting at the house of the world champion coffee roaster and her husband, wow. who came second. <laughs> they live together in they're, they're married. They live in Sweden, yeah, uh, north of Sweden. I was there on a Bentley shoot, and we got to visit them, and, and I did a coffee tasting with them. But nice. unfortunately, I've had to give up coffee, which, ah. for health reasons, which is a real 
That's worry. annoying. Yeah. It's because I drank too much. Uh, well, and it was not doing me any good. Anyway, <laughs> um, we will add more random rambles to the next episode of Footlock. But for yes. now, I think it's time to draw a line under things. Absolutely. Henry, thank you so much for uh, joining us as usual in the studio. If you want to follow Henry on any or all of the social platforms, you can find him at Henry Catchpole. And if you might be so interested to follow me, I am at Drew Stern. Stern is spelled S T E A R N E. Don't ask me why. That's just how I got it. Uh, at Carfection on Twitter. At Carfection Films on Instagram. Find us on Facebook as well. And obviously, you're already subscribed to the channel. But if you haven't, hit that bell icon. It keeps you notified of every single film we put up. And make sure you never miss a single one. Uh, but with that, it's goodbye from us. And we'll see you next time. Cheerio.